Okay, I'd just like to bolster uh, the idea behind the analogy that we've already seen between electric circuits, uh, resistive circuits, and uh, random walks on mini tubes. Okay, I've called them random walks now because that's the more common terminology. I, I, I gave you this analogy of a tourist making these random decisions of where to go next. But it's a random walk. That's what uh, the general terminology is. Here's our mini tube again. And I've introduced a new concept here, um, PIJ. Okay, PIJ is what's called a, what I'm going to call a hopping probability. Okay, and it's the probability probability um, of hopping to node J from node I. Okay, so let's just look. I've indicated what these hopping probabilities are on the mini tube example that we've already studied. Let's look at four, node four. You can see, look, that there's three edges there. So there's three possible places for me to go from node four. One, two, or three. So P41, and by the way, they all have equal probabilities in this case. So P41 is a third, P42 is a third, and P43 is a third. If you look at the hopping probabilities from node three, there's two probabilities there. There's P32, the probability of hopping to node two, which is a half, and, and P34, which is the probability of hopping to node four in this random walk, okay? Now, um, those are the ones I've just uh, indicated on there, just to give you an idea of what they are. Now, of course, we've seen that there's an analogy between this particular um, set of hopping probabilities and the electric circuit where all of the conductances and the edges were unity. But the analogy isn't just to such circuits with all unit conductance. It's actually more general. I just want to clarify what that is. So the analogy is as follows. If I've got a circuit, so given a circuit with a plus node and a minus node, remember these were the, the two point source sync circuits that uh, I introduced a while ago, and conductance Cij between node i and j. This problem is analogous to a random journey walk, we'll call it, random walk on the same graph with hopping probabilities, I've just defined what those were, Pij being Cij divided by Ci, where Ci is the sum of the conductances um, from adjacent nodes. Remember, probabilities have got to be less than one. Conductances don't need to be. So some kind of normalization is going to have to happen here. And here it is. Um, what I do is I dis if I define the hopping probabilities in a random journey around this same connected graph to be the conductances divided by the sum of the conductances, then the analogy is complete. And as you can see, if all the conductances were one, then in the previous example, then this is just, of course, you know, so it would be in, at node four, there were three edges with unit conductance. So that would be three in the denominator and one in the top for every edge. So that would be a third for each edge. OK, but this is the prescription that allows me to generalize that to a general analogy between a given uh, circuit graph with some conductances and um, hopping probabilities in a random walk around that same graph. Now. Uh, if that's true, let me explore something else. Look, let me draw, you know what, let's perhaps draw uh, some graph, okay? Some connected graph, doesn't even matter what, I won't draw too many nodes. And let's suppose that, that um, this one is the plus node, okay? Now, what did we define the effective conductance to be? It's the net divergence of currents from that node. So in this case, you can see, look, it's the sum of the J adjacent edges, and there's three in this particular drawing, 
okay, of the, you know, the currents um, through these things, which will of course be, uh, it will be, if we, if we label, if j is the label, then this will be minus the c plus j, so I'm using, instead of i, I'm using plus, because it's the plus node, right, times xj minus x plus. That's Ohm's law in each of the edges. So in this case, there would be three in that sum, three components of that sum. And, um, you know, C plus J would be the various. So, you know, so this would be C plus one. This would be C plus two, C plus three, if I'd label those edges one, two, three. OK. That was the definition of the effective conductance. Um, and of course, I need X plus to be one, and perhaps this is x minus over here, which is going to be set to zero. Okay, it's got to be to my two-point source sink uh, situation. Okay, and there'll be some x minus equal to naught for some x minus. Right, well, let's rearrange that. Okay, let's write that as c plus j, sum over j, of x plus minus xj. Okay. Now, I know what I'm going to do. Let me introduce C plus to be the sum over the J's of the C plus J's. It's the total, uh, total conductance um, of all the conductors coming out of the plus node. OK, that's a, introduce that. So that's a definition. Then you can see I can write CF like this, the sum over those adjacent nodes of um, C plus J. Let's write that as X plus. Now look, I'm going to write the second term look as this, c plus j over c plus times c plus xj. Okay? Now, x plus is just equal to 1. Okay? So I can rewrite this as c plus. Right? Because this is just this. And then... I notice, look, this, this is my p plus j, my hopping probability. According to the analogy that I just explained. And the c plus can come outside here, so that c plus can come outside. So I've got minus c plus again, sum over j, because c plus doesn't depend on j. Then I've got the p plus j, xj. All right. So interesting, I've got my effective conductance by definition is C plus minus C plus divided by um, one divided by that sum. Now, if I div I could of course divide by the C plus here, and I get one minus the sum over the adjacent edges of P plus J X J. Okay? Now let's just think about this quantity here. Okay. I'm summing over the adjacent nodes in this graph, okay? And look at what does this mean? With probability, you see, it, it's the probability, isn't it, that I'm at node P of plus, the plus node, okay? And then P plus J is the probability that I go to this node, or this node, or this node, and then if I go along this node, I then multiply it by XJ, which is the probability that I reach the plus node before the minus node. So isn't this the probability, the probability that I leave the plus and return? Okay, because I, if I sum through the edges that I can go to from the plus node, that's, I go to each one, say, say the jth node, I go to the jth node with probability P plus J, that's my hopping probability to node j. And then xj, if I multiply that by xj, that's the probability starting at node j that I end up at the plus node before the minus node. So in other words, this sum here is the probability that I leave. Okay? That I leave and return to node plus. So 1 minus that probability is surely the probability that I don't return. It's the probability that I leave but don't return. And we've already decided that that's what we call the escape probability. Okay? So CF, 
the effective conductance in the electric circuit divided by C plus, which is uh, the sum of the conductances of the edges leaving the plus node, is equal to the escape probability. That's an extremely important uh, observation. And you remember in our electric circuit, which looked like this, okay, uh, I found 8 over 5 to be my CF, okay, and look, this was unit conductance, this was unit conductance, and there were two of them. So therefore, the escape probability from this node is CEF divided by 2, because there's two, a total of conductance 2 leaving that edge, which is, of course, the 4 over 5, which is what I found, isn't it, um, when I did my numerical simulation using MATLAB. Uh, I found it's approximately 0.8, so I'm guessing that that was 4 over 5, and I've just shown you by these, uh, by these steps that, yes, indeed, I can reasonably expect, with this analogy now well-defined, that my effective uh, conductance divided by 2 is indeed the escape probability. That's an important observation because if, if ever you are asked in a random walk question to find the escape probability, it is a very sure and easy way to do it is actually to find the effective conductance. And remember, earlier in the lecture course, I gave you lots of clever kind of tricks of the trade to reduce that calculation of the effective conductance to lots of kind of reduced equivalent circuits. So isn't it amazing? I can, I can use all of those little tricks and those little rules of uh, conductors in series and parallel that I learned when I was in high school to work out escape probabilities for random walks on graphs. It's great.